fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fred. We're good. It's Fred. We got three of you. We're good. We got three of you. Fred. This um, town doesn't move without Fred. Yeah, right. I mean, and everybody forget that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Six fifty nine. We're ready. So we're gonna, I guess, probably try and have a meeting with that design build contractor over in. I don't know if he's in Dover or. What's the name? Doesn't you, matter. You would ask me that. Sorry. You'll you'll remember, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Seven o'clock. <clears throat> okay. Um. You have a manifest? No? Yeah. Yep. We make a motion to approve the July 14th manifest. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, it's just the timesheets. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Sylvia, uh, <laughs> your commission expired in yeah, 2018. <laughs> so we have to. What we we you re-nominate you and then you go to the select selectman. Yeah. Okay, so I nominate Fred and Bob for the Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission. I'll second what, that. Four-year term. Yeah. Are yeah. you going for? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we got that squared away. Okay. Minutes. You only had one one item. Page, <clears throat> page one, last sentence on the bottom of the page. Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. And that is to insert, uh, Mr. Judd said his intent is insert two. Oh, to create you. To create. And that was all I had. Excuse me again. Bless you. Sit down. Goodness. I had a minor comment, just a rewording suggestion. On the second page, regarding the vernal pool, so 7.30 p.m. vernal pool. Yep. Um, I just got confused reading that first sentence, whether we need to set it up to a certain size in order to apply. So I was going to suggest that we um, reword that to whether we need to increase the lot size as needed in order to comply with the 100 foot setback no we don't want to increase the lot size what we want to do is increase the size of wetland to a certain which the old one was a quarter acre yeah okay because we can't increase lot size for people who don't have the land so we have to figure out how to work with the vernal pools, whether they're replicated, moved, and what the setbacks are. So what does it mean we need to get it up to a certain size? Well, prior to the ordinance that was passed a year and a half ago, it used to be a quarter acre. Mm -hmm. And now the problem with this is, is that if you have a a vernal pool that's only five feet in diameter, you have to now draw a 100-foot setback around the whole thing, mm -hmm. which stops people from using their land, okay? Which I think is a little on the extreme side. What we need to do is, you know, most of the time, not most of the time, all the time when somebody comes in, they have to, if it's, get a lot of wetlands on it, they have to flag them for us. So we, we want to be able to make judgments on what, you know, what we're telling people they have to do. Because um, this is a, this could be very restrictive in some cases. Right. Not all cases, but some cases. Yeah, I understand the issue regarding the 100-foot setback, but I'm not certain what you're saying the remedy is. 
but maybe it's but, irrelevant. Well, no, we, we need uh, to discuss the remedy. That's yeah. what. That's what. That's why we need to talk about this, and not on December thirty first. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe maybe the language might end up being uh, uh, whether we need to set a minimum uh, size uh, for which the hundred foot setback would apply. I think that would make sense within this. Would you repeat that? Contact. Set a minimum the size? A minimum size for which... Like a square footage. Yeah. The 100-foot setback would apply. Oh. So on a... <clears throat> so you have 42,500 square feet in an acre. So you're roughly talking, if it's a quarter of an acre, it's like 10,000 square feet. Mm, right. Um, which is basically 100 by 100. Right. Um, I think, you know, I've worked on jobs where, well, we'll, we'll take one right here in town, um, John DeFranza. Mm -hmm. When we were over there doing the work, they had flagged a slope at the top and at the bottom and that was called a vernal pool. But it, it had a slope going all the way through it, you know, yeah. five, five to ten. <laughs> but that's where the water ran mm -hmm. in seasonal runoff. Yep. And what, and what that plan had called for was to, um, <coughs> they, they, to shed, to not have the water shed from the road into that, they, they were calling for like a, about a 10 or 12 foot cut across the cul-de-sac to avoid water going there, mm -hmm. which was really cost prohibitive considering the, um, his leach field would have been exposed in the slope into the ditch line yep. because of the cut. And what we were able to do was bring that up. We didn't fill in the vernal pool, but we were able to build a wall and add guardrail mm -hmm. to keep it from, you know, having it to lower the, the grade of the road, which would have caused like a 30 foot s s vertical drop in a slope that would have probably been about 45 or 60 feet long. Yep. So <clears throat> I think that when you, you, you have somebody, let's just say somebody who already owns a lot and they want to put an addition on their house and there's a vernal pool that's 65 or 70 feet away from the house. And let's say the vernal pool is only 25 feet in diameter. So if we take this rule and apply the 100 foot setback to it, that means they can't put an addition on their house. Now, I think, I think you know, we need to be able to work with this somehow, you know, and to just, you know, take this stamp and say, that's it. That was pretty good. Show that again. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing it again if you ask me to. But. So I think that that's why we want to get this up and discuss it now. You know, not tonight, obviously, but, you know, as soon as we can get the right people together and, and go over I'll it. Send that copy over to Jane. That, that's oh. the language that I worked up previously. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is for? Um, for, the, for this particular for this issue. this particular subject. And, oh, okay. Uh, okay. But this isn't what you want. This is what this is what this is a suggestion. Re recommended changes. Yeah. Right. right, which yeah. I had worked up okay. previously. All right, I'll make copies for everybody. Then. Prior to the hundred foot setback, we were at fifty, right? Or was it no, 75? It was seventy five. It was seventy five. Yeah. So seventy five and a quarter and a quarter of an acre. Right. So I think that we need to have discretion. And, you know, because we can't just mandate. I think that, 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 that that's what that, mm -hmm. the way the setback is right now, it mandates it. Right. And I don't think we want to mandate. Because I think the, the language that I've got here, is, and the, these are issues that could be discussed or negotiated with the Conservation Commission, but obviously, obviously the quarter of acre, and then the wording I've got is isolated wetlands uh, less than a one quarter acre in area. The planning board may reduce the wetlands buffer to not less than 50 feet. Right. 
And prior to the consideration, we'd meet with the Conservation Commission and take into consideration a bunch of factors. Their recommendations. Yeah. But obviously, quarter of acre is, is negotiable, and also the, the 50 feet is negotiable as well. Yeah, and it also depends, you know, whether they want to replicate. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. You know, remediation and things like that. Because I don't, I don't have that in there. That, uh, so I think that we probably want to get that in there. Yep. Because sometimes that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, move it. Yeah. Replace it and so that it works. Right. You know, and because um, it, it, you know, with today's equipment, it doesn't take much to do that. Right. Exactly. You know. Yep. So in uh, the meantime, do you want just the, the recommendation that Fred's made to? Um, so units? well, basically, Bob, you were just wondering what what we want to do here, and. Um, it's just that the intent of the sentence wasn't clear to me. I, I understand the issue with the 100-foot setback not always being um, re the you know reasonable option, but um, but just the way it was worded, um, I maybe it's irrelevant because. Well, it's something we're going to have to discuss. Be, I mean, yeah, you know, we got to discuss it. Oh yeah. Right. So this is just mm -hmm. this right now was just something to bring it up to say that we need to get it on the agenda so that we can work on this now because, I mean, August is two weeks, <laughs> then it's September, mm -hmm. and then boom, 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 and here we are, it's, right. it's December. Oh, yeah. so do, you, do you want to leave it the way it is? Yeah, then? we can leave it away okay. for right now because right. what we need to do is we need to um, start working on when we can get a meeting to discuss this. Right. And, um, Okay. Go ahead. Can I make a suggestion? Yep, yeah. go right ahead. So, so and I were speaking, and um, we were thinking that it might be a good idea to form not a subcommittee, but a working group of a, which would include a planning board member, Sylvia, myself, and Rick. Yep. To go over what Fred uh, wrote up, and you know, work it out. Number one, because we have plenty of of a budget to do something like that. Yep. So, um, you know, rather than to continue to kick it down the road. Yeah, no, we don't want to kick it down the road. So that's something you guys would be okay with, we can go ahead yeah, and set that up. Yeah, because that's how we got into that brouhaha last fall. Why don't I give a copy of this to Cam? Yeah, that's a good and then, idea. Um, Thank you. Yep. We don't, like I said, we, we don't want to be trying to, we don't have plenty of time to discuss it. So do we need a motion to approve a working group to... Uh, well, no, that's she already... She doesn't want to do the minutes first. To yeah. Approve oh, yeah. The okay. minutes. yeah. You made... Fred's made one correction already. So do you want to leave it alone the way it is right now for Bob? Sure. Okay. Okay. So we need a motion then to... Uh... So moved. Okay. All those in favor? All right. All right. Oh, you okay. have a second. Oh, second. Okay. He seconded. And okay. It. okay. All right. I guess All right. Don is so, coming. What we'll do is you guys take a look at it because you know where Fred's coming from, you know where I'm coming from, you know where Bob's coming from. We just need to get this thing so we can get people discussing it and we have plenty of time for the public hearings. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do and then we'll make a recommendation to either form a group possibly with a member of the planning board and a member of the conservation commission or to hold a, you know, a meeting and invite a conservation committee, yep. whichever you yeah. guys would prefer. But yep, sounds good to me. Cool. Okay, well, got five minutes or so. Well, three minutes. Or so. Three I'm minutes. Going, yeah, I know. I'm going you by you this. don't go by that clock. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's wishful thinking clock. <laughs> no, actually, it should be ahead twenty minutes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as, I just think we need to be able to be flexible on that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, yeah, and I guess as soon as you guys can come up with something, we don't want to waste time. Yeah. Because, like I said, we'll be, you know, looking at it like, oh, we're, we're just barely going to squeeze it in and, and all that. And that didn't work out till last year. We don't want to do that again. Okay, Roscoe, take it away. 
or do I need to read anything? No, you don't okay. need to read. It's a continuation. It's a continuation so. of public hearing for major subdivision for Range Road of Edward and Sandra Cross. Thank you. You got that teal working good on the water. Teal move. I knew you start selling big walls. I was going to use the I can take a look at. Um, I emailed Sylvia when did. Do you think just going forward? Do you have my email? Uh, I'll give you a call after this. <laughs> okay. Um, we got several sheets here. The first one is just a, some slight changes with your additions that you asked for uh, last time. Like you want to know how many acreage, uh, how many acres of non-steam and non-wet was on the open space. So that's. Showing. Just below the north arrow. Then I kick the, uh, the the private roads up enough so we don't have to share it. So yeah, the so one on the right, I kicked it in. in you made that that right away bigger, yes. so that the driveways. Yeah. So that's the major thing you'll we'll see on this. And then sheet two is just the uh, you know the plan showing you know how we get in the normal subdivision. And then sheet three, um, my engineer drew up uh, road profiles, drive well, driveway profiles coming down to two percent. Then um, one of them's the ten percent. Road and the other is seven percent. Then the last sheet uh, shows the site distance. Um, they're all over four hundred feet, except that one. Um, the one on the left, looking northally, um, it's two hundred sixty-eight feet. Pretty, so pretty I think you get your sheet three and sheet four backwards. Yeah. This is. Is that three? Or, or the num I guess ignore the numbering. <laughs> Sorry. It, I, I, knew, I, I knew that this was the line of sight for, some, for a range road. Because <laughs> I knew it yeah. wasn't a driveway. Yeah, well, the engineer gave me those numbers. But These damn engineers. <laughs> they don't know what to do. <laughs> They're just going to go by. Yeah. Suggestion. They're suggestions. They're suggestions. Yeah, that that profile on the driveway, that you know, that that's pretty much. Ten percent is like nothing. You have a lot of driveways. I know. I got driveways that we had to build at thirteen percent, but that's the town of Milford allowed it because they wanted the subdivision completed, because it was on the books for thirty years. <laughs> they wanted it done. It's not. They're not ideal driveways. But most of them we got at like 10%. There's a couple that are ski jumps. There's plenty of fill on the lots to build them. You don't have enough dirt buy some. Now, this, based on what I think, with the slopes that you have on there, I think mean you got plenty of dirt. And he's got to propose a 10%. Um, we could. Make it nine percent. It, it, it just it just kind of shows it works. I think you know you certainly don't want to go steeper than ten. That's yeah, I agree with that. Usually, ten is pretty much the max, mm -hmm. unless it's just circumstances where it, it's the way it is. But you know, there's enough site work in those driveways right there that. 10% will work. So on the uh, on the site distance, the uh, the sh 
shortest one is for the two uh, the two lots shared it's roadway the lot on the left I mean sorry the road on the left looking to the right downhill there's a drop off yeah, that one. Yeah, so that's 268 feet. Everything else is like 400 right. plus, 400, 400. It's just that one. And just uh, that's the neighbor's drawing away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the driveway for the three units would be just about opposite yeah. the existing driveway for uh, Covitis. Yeah, yeah. And we, there was a <clears throat> telephone pole, so we yeah. had to do it one way or the other, and the yeah. uphill side worked better. I think we probably want to go and take a look too. Yeah, so there's another driveway, driveway right there. Right there. To the pavement okay. Kicks down. But I th think the the greater concern would have been, at least for me anyways, is for a vehicle coming downhill towards that driveway and making sure we have enough sight distance. Yeah, I mean, it's like but the, the, the one of concern is the coming up the hill towards the driveway. Yeah. And I think what we would, what we probably should end up having your engineer do the calculation. The speed limit is 35 on Range Road, but uh, to factor in the fact that we have a we have a slope going up the hill, and what the and of course that would be helping with regard to the uh, the speed. Well, no, because usually people go faster going to up go up the hill. The hill. Right. Because they have well, to we, go fast. We can't go any faster. Well, I, I know that. We can't go any faster than what we have for for the design of right. 35. Right. That's fine. I mean, so, I mean, the thing is, is I think once you're out there, I mean, this is you're going to come down at two percent right here, and then you're going to go right back up. So when they pull out to the edge of the road, you know, they're. It's funny. I the other day I'm on Route 27 and. Somebody stopped to look to the left, and they're stopped about 15 feet from Route 27, up by uh, Charming Fear Farms, and there's trees in the way. And I'm, one, I'm sitting there waiting for them to pull out in front of me, because they stopped so far away, they couldn't see, mm -hmm. you, know, you know? And so I'm always waiting for them to like pull out because they can't see anything. You know, so it depends on how far people pull out too. So it's. Yeah. But your your normal rule is 200 feet. Well, that just is for a single driveway. Yeah, yeah. So we. So I think we're. Well, I think think what I'd like to be like to be able to see is your engineer showing a calculation that at 35 miles an hour and going uphill, the sight distance is. Well, something less if than we're going to go out there and take a look at it, you can do this. You can put the center line of the driveway in. You could put that in, and you can mark out that 268 feet so we can look down the road and see it. Yeah. That would be simple. And then when, you, when you're sitting there, you could, you know, definitely want to see it on the ground because that makes a difference when, you know, when you're at, we're not out there going, I think that's 268, <laughs> you know. But like you said, you want to see it, but that's fine. But if we see it on the ground too, that makes, oh, yeah, that, yeah. that helps. But I think if, for us, we can end up, if the engineer shows his calculations that uh, the safe stopping distance or safe sight distance for 35 miles an hour going up a up hill. Up a hill, oh yes. I mean, is yes. The breaking time. Right, is less than 400 feet. Yeah. Which, which I'm sure it's going to be. Yes. And for us to gravity make, working with it, yes. And for us to make a waiver on this would be a, a lot easier, easier to be able to say that yep. rather than just say, okay. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. The other thing, too, is I think we need uh, profiles on these two, these two roads. Well, the profile <coughs> like these, right here. Yeah, no, these, are these out to the road? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you already have them. Yeah. Yeah, he's got them down at two percent and then up. Okay. So yes. one is seven, one's ten. Yes. Yeah, the, the longer one. These. Well, one is seven, one's ten. Yes. This is probably seven percent, and that's. These are less. Okay, he says. Um, so this driveway right here. 
He starts five, off four and five. And four, five. So four and five is this one. Yeah, the, the bottom one is for the left two lots. Okay. So we did 10%. And then that's the steeper. So he did it right up through up to here. Okay. 20. Yep. From edge pavement to there. Okay. And this is 70%. And, and just so you know, the, the trees are already cut way back. Yeah. Because when they when they did the uh, well, across when it. they did the new telephone poles, they just hacked all those big trees off. Yeah. Oh, well, well, that time I saw you out there, yeah. they were all cut then. Yeah. yeah. Since I've been here. No, 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 oh, no. No, no, no. no, no. Just no the, the trees aren't right on the road like they are on the other side. Yeah, because they on this actually side, they already cut it way back. I think they were out there when we were out there the last year. Yeah. Okay, so we get. That's six is uh seven percent. Yeah. I'm following this profile here, yes. okay. Yeah. This one's it would be flatter. Very flat. Yeah. Okay, so then we guess we're gonna need need to have uh Keach Nordstrom take a look at this to get uh cost of of building those two up to the Past the hundred foot buffer up to the to the to, to the this line. where the where the private way yeah. begins. Right. And then we also have the uh, issue with regard to uh, the cistern or whatever. Have you been able to talk to the fire chief? So I, I've talked to Matt a couple of times. Yeah. You know, and we're communicating on options. Okay. And I haven't been able to get a hold of him in the past two weeks. I don't know if he's around or not. He's not no. around that much. It's difficult. He's not around that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's probably pretty busy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the reality is, is that we are working towards the goal. Okay. We're doing something, and, uh, and we're just in an open communication. And the last word for it, I'm sure we can work something out. Wh what's his preference? So the preference is, or the considerations, is what what would it take to do um, one that would require permitting. Okay, which would be dredging the existing wetland area. Yep. Or doing um, a self-contained a self-contained hole or a pit or pond, whatever you want to call it, where we wouldn't have to do permitting. Okay. You probably would have to go with a containment as opposed to a, a pond, because your problem would be resupply. It, um, by water table. Well, well, I understand that, but the, <clears throat> in order to make sure you have X amount of water in there all times of the year, mm -hmm. you'd have to be really deep. We're going to be, the, we got a wetland right next to No, time. I know so that. We'll, we'll have the bottom way below, so the wetland level is the water. Right, no, I understand that. It's going to go through the ground. So we'll just go, and we're looking to engineer it that way, and we're actually in the process of that. Okay. Because okay, in just, order to honestly, keep, honestly, that's the that's the easier way, which he's happy with. But I think he still wants to consider what would it take to do into the water, into the water. And so him and I have had some discussion back and forth on that. The only thing is, with with regard to creating a pond, you're going to have to be able to show us that you're going to have enough water, right. even under drought conditions. So yes, that's that's why I was saying you'd have to be really deep. Excavators go pretty deep. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and, we, and we know that. And his preference is a pond. Whichever way, that's his preference over the system. Okay. And that's why we're working. We're trying to figure out what would be best. Well, when you say sister, there are three things. Though. Well, you yeah. didn't mean sister. No, no, no. Doug, dig a hole. Dig a big hole or use, or use the pond. Okay. Those are his preference. One or the other. Yeah. That's what he would prefer to do. But a cistern is a third option too. Third, that we you'd prefer not to. to. I'm aware of that. Well, but that's it depends on how much you wind up spending getting permits to do it. Will be zero permits if we just dig a hole. And that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. Oh no, I I understand. So, like Fred said, it's just if it's got 30, 30,000 gallons of water there in the middle of July, well, this year you'd have no problem. Yeah, right. <laughs> up until. 
last year, a week and, and a half ago. Last year was the issue. Yeah. Actually, last year, as dry as it was, yeah. that thing was still trickling through. Yeah. It never stopped trickling. Yeah. And so therefore, it never dried up. Right. So once you dig a pond, you got to remember, you're going to have to get it a certain... You're going to have to make sure your slopes on the side are a certain right. so that they don't slump in. Right. And the That's the big problem. Animals prop. can get out. Yeah. Well, it's not the animals getting out. They can get out. Well, it's I a matter of what, once you dig it. You don't it, have to fill up. Yeah, because what happens is slumps in. Oh, there's uh, the engineer uh, designed one for me, and it's yeah. the typical what's expected. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes you know i've seen them where they've had to like line them to just keep them from slumping mm -hmm. yeah well we've got the room we, yeah we, we got the room to do whatever we need to do as far as size goes there's plenty of room there then once we get that done your teacher will want to look at the bond for that yeah too. right so i don't know if you want them to hold off oh yeah but we might as well hold off yeah because one Right. right, because you guys got to kind of figure out what you're doing so that you can have a plan kids can look at. And um, I mean, I, I know what it's going to look like, but you still got to put it on paper. Right. I mean, you're going to dig a hole and it's going to fill up with water. If you tried to do it in the next week or so, you better get some big pumps. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, watch what you ask for. I, I asked for rain. Oh, we got it. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't ask for that much rain. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I got it yesterday. You didn't say how much you were asking for. That was the problem. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I was on a Thurston Pond dam today with they had a, the selectmen had a walk through up there. Yeah. And uh, it's spilling over in one particular area. There's the beavers have contributed to. Oh. And all that rain has made it mm -hmm. that way, so there's a lot of water right now. See, that was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. This is my job in Manchester. Gold Street flows into the job. Gold uh, Street. Oh, yes. Yeah. But that's what it looked like today. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just a matter of you, once you guys get a, a plan on it. And I was I was hoping to have a little bit more information from Matt, but I understand he's really busy, you know. But he had a phone conversation with me after we met a couple months, and he said, "I'm sure we can come up with one or the other." Yeah. Um, that that would be his preference. It's just a matter of what one would. I be guess it, it it probably comes down to what you guys can get the quickest. You know, whether you want to try to go get permits to get in there or just dig the big pond. Well, if, if it's dredging the filling, was he thinking he'd handle the whole thing? Or there's, there's a possibility that he might, that he's willing to try to get the permitting done because he thinks it's a more beneficial use. For the, for the town? Well, we would offer an easement. You can put what you want here. Well, that, however long it that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's, that's on goes on you for time right and, and he also and i understand that too I yeah because that. i mean if you're looking to get going it's going to be more expedient for you guys to come up with the pond than it is to, to get permitting right it, and i realize that too and i think he does too and that's why him and i have been con conversing about what are our other options outside of that okay you know and again it's just it's oh no i mean it's having. it's completely your because decision we all, we all think that it would be better to utilize the existing water source that's there but it's going to require permitting and mm -hmm. different stuff, and that's going to delay time. Well, if he's going to do the permitting and we're not approved till he gets his permitting, um, no, that wouldn't be. That's kind of what they're saying. That's all I'm saying. It, the time thing goes on you if you wait for him to get it done. Right. And My so all I'm saying is you you can do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying if you wanted to get going, you're you're better off to get a get a hole in, in the ground. And that was part of our conversation in him with a question mark is is there a way that we could do something contingent on getting his approvals and not hold necessarily holding it up and i believe he was going to talk to you about that it's really not up to me it's going to be up to the state isn't it well, well, as far as no, the, you give the you give the you allow things well, to move forward the only problem is, is if 
for some reason, I'm not saying they would, if they said no, then you have to go back to the alternative. So in order for us to go for something like that, we would probably need some sort of a plan as your backup. Yes. So we could say, okay, mm -hmm. if you can't get this, this is what we're going to get. Right. It, and so that was part of our conversation, which was, you know, how could it be funded if it was going to be a longer time period? Yeah. You know, and if it failed, then the funding would be in place to do the alternative. Yeah. So, I mean, for us to give you the go-ahead on that, we'd need to have your Doug Pond plan. So right, that Keach Nordstrom that's could right. review it. That's right. So you, you, that's why we're working it. Okay. Was that so we have a Doug Pond plan, and then the sec and the backup would be that. Right. And the funds for that would, I'm assuming, would have to be set aside, um, so that you don't have to worry about that. Well, if you don't build the lots, if you sell them, this would be the biggest thing you have to do, is build the pond. So the pond would have to be built before you could sell the lots. Or bond. Or bond. Or, or bond. Right. We're, we're looking at a bond or building right. the, the, the driveways too, or the yeah. road too. You know, get, you're going to have to get X done, right. you know, these things here done, because then that way everything's done. And whether you sell the lots now or two years from now, at least all of that's done. You're, you're, all your stuff is vested in the lots or lots. And it would be done. Well, that way, you wouldn't. Or the plan is sold as a as a whole. Okay, that's fine too. Yes. So, but nothing would be, you know, be able to be sold or or built on until these issues or items would be, you know, in place. Right. Or they'd be done contingent at the same time. Yeah. That's to be expected. Yeah. Um, then that way, whoever buys it, oh, well, you know. Surprise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. One, th one thing uh, I'd like you to see you do at Resco is to move this the common area thing, move it out to your, some of your open space here. Some of the data? Yeah. So just, you can read it? Yeah, to so make it okay. easier to read, uh, just identifying what the, area, what the area of steep slopes, what the area of wetlands, yeah. and then... Uh, and then how that compares to the requirement. I think it's 50%, no more than 50% can be, can be wetlands or steep slopes. So you, you obviously you make that, but just to show that calculation over here, it would be easier to read. So you're basically kind of waiting on Matt right now. You know, yes, I guess that is, that's why you don't have a formal plan put in place, because I was waiting and hoping, hoping to have a particular direction. You know, it didn't happen. Um, but we are talking, and I'm going to just, we're just going to engineer out the plan for digging a hole. You know, because that's, ultimately, that's going to be the fallback. Yeah, because you won't be, like I said, you, you, eventually you probably could get that question is is how long will it take to get it and you know. saying if this takes four months for the town to get the dredges built you can't do anything for four months do you want to wait four months six months that's not you don't even have to make that decision tonight right. because you still got to come up with a plan but that's all i'm saying to you is is that if you want to get going you're better off to get this that's that's all that's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm not telling you that's what you have to do. It's just a matter of if you want to get going, this is the surefire way. And I understand that, Pete, and I, and I know that I'm going to expend this, you know X amount of dollars to do either one. Right. And I'm prepared to do that. Yeah. No, that's, that's fine. Good. I'm just looking I'm at trying it. Trying to give the town the ability to have something better. And that's oh. That's why I'm trying I mean, to be. No, I understand that. That is an open option if it can happen. Um. You know, I to be honest, I don't think we we can to, uh, require another portion of the th of the town to make application for no. the applicant. Well, that would be we're not required. That Matt's the one that brought that up mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, these were kind of guidance that neither one of us knew what could or couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. So if Matt wanted a fire pond, 
Would he have to come to the select board first? Oh, no, no. Yeah. So he could go to DES I mean, we, himself. We the, we, the planning board, right. can't tell him to go do that. Right, right. Exactly. And, and I don't think we're doing that. So what I, I, all I'm saying is, is if Matt wants to go get a, he can. He can call the state and say, hey, I want to do this. And then they would obviously come down. And if you're involved, the question is, all I was bringing up is, how long is it going to take you? That's all. But to be honest, yeah. it's, uh, it doesn't make any difference whether it's these guys or Matt. Right. The, the wetlands people treat everybody the same. Oh, no, I know that. I'm just saying they might not allow it. Oh, yeah, right. That's exactly. all I'm saying. Right. So if you want to wait for them to review all that and then they come back and say, no, you wasted, could be two months, could be five months or a year. So if the fire chief wants to dredge the pond. No, he, he, wants, he, he wants to, but he's got to ask. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. But, but there's a cost to the town to, to, to do the selectmen have to agree with him that we're going to spend? Well, that would come out of his budget. It would be uh, well. We'd be expecting it to come from you, right? So, if so, so here's kind of our discussion. <laughs> right. It might be right. It might not be right. You know. And again, he, he didn't know, and I didn't know. But I plan on digging a hole, and that hole is going to cost me X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm more than happy to take that X amount of dollars, give it to Matt to put into his budget, and he can go ahead and dig a hole in the water that's already there. So in other, you know, so whether that is an option that can even happen, that was the question, okay? And then second, um, one way I'd be happy to do the digging because I, it's not permitting and I don't have to worry about anything and I don't have anybody looking over my shoulder. Right. On the other way, I don't want anything to do with doing the digging. You know, I would, I, I, I'll be happy to give them the funds to get that done, but then I would rather have an outside party digging. Now, this is, that was the question him and I went back and forth on. And his answer was, I think we can do that, but I don't know. Well, I, I think we'd have a problem with that because your approval from us is based on this getting done. Yeah, see, and that was the other question. Is, well, the only way we can approve this yeah. is if you give us a plan to show us a dug hole which has nothing to do with going into the brook. Right. Okay. That's the only way we can prove it. Okay. If you guys get approval from the state and you want to do that, that's completely up to you as long as it meets what we're looking for. Right. Okay. So now I can understand that. So right. if I give you but I'm just saying to you, I from expediency saying. purpose, it's easier to go dig a square I hole know, and I get the. I know it is. I just, and the I problem, the only. All that water, it's, yeah, it's a shame. I know that. I agree with you. You should be able to do it, but that's not the way things work, unfortunately. But yeah, okay. it's a matter of, like Fred said, it, when it comes into something like this, because yeah. it's a pretty good size water, they're going to be like, hmm. You know, yeah. it, it, it gets pretty involved. You're talking about, you know, booms in the water and. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be getting into shoring and all kinds of stuff. It might, it might not be worth it. So, so with all of listening to all of your input, yeah, we're we're probably moving in the direction of digging a hole. Despite what I think is better. Well, no, you can find out. I agree with you. I mean, I'm fine with putting the thing in the water too, but it's not. The, you can't just do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I, I mean, all the all the turbidity will be gone. It, it just goes. <laughs> it's, but it's a matter of. I'm putting a bridge in, in Ossipi in two weeks. It took them a year and a half. They already had a culvert in there. The culvert fell apart. And the stuff that we're going to have to do to put the new one back in is way more than what it was when they put the first one in. I hear what you're saying, and, I, and that's why I, I, we're moving towards having the engineer just get the whole drawn out so that we have that all for you. Because like you said, Roscoe, you're going to be able to go deep enough. Oh, yeah. Just dig deeper. Because your engineer is probably going to be asking for these test bits and possibly even borings to be able to know how deep he's going to have to go. The other well, option is... I know where is, the water table is. I mean, it's going to... We're doing it right next to that big wetland. Mm -hmm. um, 
If we is there a ledge there? I don't know. Well, the if thing we move down three feet, we're in water. That's right. That's the beginning of the water. Mm -hmm. We've got to do a test at Colonial Rocks. So we can do a pit. Yeah, we'll just do a pit. Yeah, so you go over where you're going to do it. You, you know exactly where you're going to put it because you get all the survey information. You can figure it out. I mean, if you have to move it back a little bit, you know. And how deep is your machine go? 12 feet? 15 feet? Yeah, probably 12 or 15 feet. We'll go 12, 15 feet? I mean, I, I just don't see it being ledgy, but. The well, you never know. Is, yeah, you gotta, you gotta test it. Yeah. Um, we, might, we might be lucky. It might be the only sand in the airfield. <laughs> No, this this is sand in Deerfield. <laughs> Not a lot. Actually, enough. the bottom. But, yeah, there, but there's some. Oh yeah. The, the bottom of that wet that wet area it was crystal clear this past spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we were out there, and it looks like a beautiful sand bottom. There's not even vegetation growing. Yeah. So maybe we'll see. I'm with you. So, I mean, you can still <coughs> have Matt ask the question. Yeah. You know, I don't. Based on what Fred just said, he happens to work at that place. All right, just dealing Fire with Fire ponds it. probably don't take get any breaks over anything else. No, I, I, I had just had a, a on a project in Plasto, with <laughs> pump station for the town's water department, and uh, it took months to get an approval on that. And plus, they ended up sending it to the to the uh, Corps of Engineers for them to check on Review it as well. It. Mm -hmm. So towns don't get breaks. Compared no. to so we're kind of hoping. Right. So, so now you piqued my interest. Is this has to do in Plasto with the, the uh, public water system mm -hmm. they're trying to put in? Yep. I'm, I'm benefiting from that. One of my, my commercial buildings is in Plasto. Oh, is that right? Okay. And it's part of that cleanup zone thing down. Yeah, they're going to probably start the pump station next week. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that's that's wet there also, yeah. very much so. Well, then we're going to just work on with the direction we've already planned on, which is to dig a hole. And then was my vote. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and it, I understand exactly where you're coming from. It's just a matter of once you start trying to take an excavator and go into the water. It's not like the old days. No. <laughs> it, it, it literally has to be a federal emergency. <laughs> so if you have two choice, if you have two options, they'll want the, the less. Invasive Wet one, touching, invasive. probably yeah. So, so that's what, that's probably what they would look at. They go, "You're right here. Why don't you put it there? <laughs> Just put it right here." <laughs> that's the uh, that's what the direction we're already moving towards. You know, where I didn't hear back, I finally had to make a decision to do something. So the engineer is already working on doing whatever you need for whatever. So you could dig a pit down like 20 feet. Put a directional boring machine in there and go out into the mill. You'll get all the water you want. <laughs> but, but you uh, can do that until you break through to the bottom of that wetland and then you've just disturbed the bottom and they won't let you do Right. No. Where's the Actually, believe it or not, you can take them and go lineal and if it's perforated and it doesn't come out of the ground, you'll get all the water you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're probably going to work in with a plan for that, and then uh, you just we're going to want to have a walkthrough real. Yeah. So. You want to do a site walk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to have the pond plan before we do the site walk? We can show you where the pond's going. Why? Well, I, I happen to be there one day. We kind of know where it's. Where it <laughs> I said like you should probably put it right here, <laughs> but I'm just saying if. The more you you have on the plan, it would probably be better just because then that way together, when yeah. we go, yeah, okay, yeah, it's going here, and we know what the plan is, we're good. I mean, I don't think it's going to take you very long to get it a plan drawn for a pond. I just have to twist the engineer's arm. <laughs> he twists mine, but I have to twist. <laughs> yes. Tell him you are going to bring him out and have him do the measuring of the depth of the test pit. So you basically get a few items. You're going to move some writing over here so we can see that. You're going to check out the line of sight from the one driveway. 
yeah, on that 268. Give us the yeah, calculation on that. For yeah. Me. So you want the calculation that shows how quick can someone stop if they were traveling 35 miles an hour up, 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 up the hill. hill. And whether it's 50 feet, 70 feet, oh, 30 it's gonna, feet, whatever. It's going to be more than that, but yeah. Whatever it is. Right. And if it's if it's two two 250 feet, then we can waive the 400 foot requirement because. I get that. Now I understand that. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's how quick does it stop breaking uphill? Right. Yeah. At 35. Which which is probably pretty short. It's pretty short. I would imagine. And then your pond, and once you have a plan yeah, for the pond, then vote on that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I take these back, Roscoe? Did I have one of them for I'll the give you this file? One. Yeah, I'll keep one Yeah, just as long as I have one for the file, I'll be uh, fine. Use them again. There you go. You want to keep that one? Uh, I've written on it, so. Go ahead. Sure. It's yours. It's yours. You want to keep it so you have a yeah, that one in your hand? Okay. Okay. So you've got to come back. Or Four minutes over. And uh, Cam, you could have Sylvia take a look too and see if she has any comments as you, well. Because you said you did email her a copy, correct? I did. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you, and then we'll, as soon as you uh, get those few things, then we'll schedule a walkthrough. So what would be the next? Yeah. So, do you when do you want to do you want to see them with a plan, or do you want to wait to? I just assume get everything scheduled right now because that helps me put pressure on Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> pressure on the I had Brown here when we started the skin project. Yeah. So um, I expect two weeks is not going to be enough time. I don't know if the engineer can have it two weeks. Yeah. Ago. I mean, he could try, but if he can't, then just keep it. I think because I think a month would be safer. That would be August 11th. Uh, so far, you've got the compliance meeting with uh, McCarran for that night. Oh, yeah, okay. That shouldn't, shouldn't be bad. No. So, so we maybe can do just seven. This, this one and, and that one, and that would be That's it. Okay, 745 yeah. continuation. Yeah. What time is that? 745, August so that, 11th. What time we get McCarran scheduled? Yeah. Hmm? What, what time, time is. Of 7.15, oh, okay. coming in for yeah, yeah. half an hour. So you want to schedule a site walk sometime soon before that day? So if you, you're pretty sure you'll have everything for your plan? Yeah, we have a plan. Okay. So if you want to schedule a site walk prior to the meeting, that'd be great. That would be, we could do it the Wednesday before or a weekend. What's best for you? Probably. So the 7th is a Saturday. August 7th is a Saturday. Yeah. August 4th is a Wednesday. Um, August 4th, my weekend, that may be a Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> how's, a, how's a Wednesday during the week? Work? Oh, um, I won't be able to make it. I'm going to be in Osby building the bridge. Oh. So, so that, that's I, Saturday then? Saturday works better. I don't even know if I do this Saturday. It's going to be. Uh, Tuesday or Thursday. I mean, you don't have to do it on a Wednesday. I'm going to try to make it. That's all I can do. Um, Saturday would be better than Wednesday. But Saturday's not good for Roscoe. I can't make it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a site review. A site view. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Saturday. Because nothing's going to happen until the meeting anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that if, that's, if Saturday works better, then pick Saturday. Okay, what time Saturday? 9 o'clock. 9 a.m.? Do you want to? Yeah, I think we can. We'll go for nine. It, that was the seventh. The what seventh, want? correct. Uh, was it the seventh? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then the continuation would be the eleventh. Yep. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, for a continuation to August eleventh at seven forty-five. Yep. And to conduct a site walk on August 7th, Saturday, at uh, 9 a.m. at the site. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you guys.
then Jane, you can give us a reminder at our next yeah, meeting. I'll give a reminder you all to show up. I just put it on my phone. Oh, I'll, I'll forget it. Oh, yeah, like the same problem. All right. 753. Damn it. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, there's the. Uh, Jim? All yours. Oh, no, you got to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a public hearing. Public hearing, <laughs> forgot about that one. Okay, in accordance with the state statutes, you are hereby notified that Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, at 745 for a lot application, lot line <coughs> adjustment for Norman and Ann Lauria, 234 North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, for property located on North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, identified as tax map 405, lots 75, consisting of 30 acres and 76 consisting of five acres. The intent of the application is to adjust lot lines between lot 75 and lot 76. Lot 75 would then consist of 31.10 acres and lot 76 would consist of 3.9 acres. You're invited to attend and offer your comments. If you are unable to be there, the board will hear your comments in writing prior to the hearing and read them aloud at the hearing. Okay. That and pass that way. Okay. Right. A couple extras. Okay. extras. Zoom, they would have heard that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have a, the dotted line is the existing lot line? Yes. Okay. So the intent basically would be to relinquish a portion of lot 76 back to lot 75, that, that's correct? Yes. Okay. So 1.1 1, 1 acres is going back to lot 75. I have one page, you have. <laughs> uh, you can't do that. I suck at it. Yeah, so I'm look, you have two pages. I'm looking at one and they go, you've got a different plan than I do. Okay, this is just a blown up, exploded yeah, plan right. of what you're doing. Right. I mean. We, put, we made it two sheets so that someone could see the entire perimeter. Mm -hmm. No, I just have one. That's why I'm sitting there oh, going. Well, I'm looking at what Fred has Here's, and I'm like. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, he's got a different one. I'm going, yeah. Oh, he's left out. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, Pete. There's sheets one and two here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd say you're okay. This dates back to 1986. Not our application, but this subdivision plan was done in 1986. They put in that sort of lot line. Yeah. I'm, I really don't know. Uh, RSL layout design did it, and what the intention was at the time, I'm not sure. I think it was a fu future road. It was. A, it could be a major subdivision. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. So. Yeah. In Deerfield? <laughs> we, we have applied for state subdivision approval because we're reducing the lot below five acres, and I have the application and a copy of the test pit. I don't think they were submitted. No. I'm not sure. No. And you can show, you can give it to Pete, I'll show. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, I um, didn't get yeah, if you want to see that. Okay. It's been about two weeks since we submitted it, but, you know, like everyone, we're busy. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't see it there. Have you got your, uh, haven't got the wetlands scientist stamp on this? We can add that. Okay. So far, that's only nice. Okay. Two, at, two at four feet, one at 27, 27 inches. Yeah. That's why you guys design them. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the four feet are fine. It's a water table. Uh, the first one, water table, was no, no water observed at 27 inches. Uh, no water observed at 48 when they dug, but the restrictive at 18 was this seasonal high water table. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, hold on to that. that. Yeah, oh, I'll put that me. back. Pretty basic. Yeah. So I guess all I can see is just the wetland scientist stamp on it. Stamp yeah. and the Put the bounds in. Yeah. Oh, I assume we have no butters. Is there anybody that's in a butter to this here? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, you're making it too easy, Jim. All right. I see you're making it too easy. <laughs> it's my preference, lately. <laughs> <laughs> You have anything, Bob? Uh, just one minor question: Is there a house on this lot? On um, um, lot seventy-six? No. No. Okay. All Initial right. approval. And get the uh, the stamp on yeah. it. We'll make a uh, make a motion to grant uh, conditional approval, subject to uh, the having the wetland scientist stamp on the uh, on the plan. And a uh, monumentation certification that uh, the three three granite bounds uh, are have been set. And state subdivision approval. Oh, and state subdivision approval. Yeah, too. Good. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So, so you, how much time do you need for that, Jim? Um, Thirty days. Well, 60. Except for the state subdivision approval, I don't know. It, they're like everybody, they're swamped with work. Yeah. 90? Uh, if we can. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. 90 we days. We can always come back in before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Do we get a second to Bob? Second. Okay. All Thank those you. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> um, you want you wanted to keep one of these for now? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'd like to keep one of them okay. anyway. Yeah. And then give them back to Jim, I guess. You want the plans back, Jim? Um, no. Okay. They'll give, they'll give, us, they'll right. give us the complete plans when we... Okay, that's that one. Mr. Right. Jim, you're right on time. All right. Gee. Okay. Oh, two Gee. minutes behind. Okay. Here we go. There's the notice. Okay. And these are the. Uh, oh, yes, he's off to French. Okay. In accordance with state statutes, you are hereby notified that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, at 8 p.m. for an application for a lot line adjustment for Ingrid DeRosiers of 140 Mountain Road. Deerfield, New Hampshire, for a property located on Mountain Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, identified as tax maps, excuse me, tax map 416 lot 75, consisting of 
12.15 acres and 75.1 consisting of 12.58 acres. The intent of the application is to adjust the lot lines between 75 and 75.1. Lot 75 would then consist of 9.28 acres and lot 75.1 would consist of 15.54 acres. You are invited <coughs> to attend and offer your comments. If you are unable to, the board will accept your comments in writing prior to the hearing and read them aloud at the hearing. Okay, Jim. Um, thank you, uh, Jim Franklin, the surveyor from Terrace, and uh, the landowner is with me, so we don't need a letter of authorization. This is uh, when we were first before the board in 2019, and we submitted a lot by or uh, subdivision at that time. And the person who intended to buy lot 75 one changed his mind. So there's a new buyer involved and they wanted to change the lot line to in, increase it. So I brought, I brought a copy of the, the, the 2019 plan just so that I show continuation. I'll give it to you back. Okay. And on, on this plan, it is just, I just colored this just briefly to show the difference. We've got the blue line. This is the existing lot line yeah. here that we're going to change over to here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what this plan shows right there. Yes. Okay. Oh, and you'll be, you'll be using the stone wall. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. The boundary. Yeah. That's good. And that's it. State subdivision approval is not needed for either lot because we're not going to reduce it below five acres. Yep. So you go from 12. 0.15 to 9.28, and the other one is going to be 12.58 to 15.45 acres. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So what do you know about Adam Hill Road? Is that we have in the notes, we have addressed that. Oh. That was one of the reasons the first buyer changed his mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to the left of the locust plan. Yep. So, <laughs> do you come in from Tandy Road or do you come in from Mountain Road? Mountain. Okay. Because I was looking, I'm looking at this right here. Yeah, uh, Tandy's. It's right there. Yeah. Now, do people go up and down that a lot, Tandy Road, through the woods? Tandy, no. What? Yeah. Not a lot. Yeah. I've ridden through Adam's Hill on my bike, but that's... Yeah, that's... Yeah. Mountain bike. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's what I meant, not cars. I meant, you know, like people walking yeah. and that kind of stuff. Not as much anymore. No? Too many ticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the I'm good. Yeah, the only... Uh, the only thing is the uh, wetland scientist, I guess. Yeah. Do that and then put your monumentation on it and. Okay. You need any bar? No. Okay. Make a motion to grant uh, conditional approval for the lot line adjustment for Ingrid. Is it Derosian? Yeah, okay. D I didn't mention your name up. That's good. I do. All right, and I, and I, I shouldn't be doing that because my name gets messed up all the time. Subject, subject to uh, including a uh, the Welland Scientist stamp and uh, also uh, uh, mon certif certification of monumentation being set by uh, Mr. Franklin, which I guess we got one, two, three, just three, uh, three points, no, two, two points. 
Oh, the to be set for the grant upon or so be three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want ninety days again? Well, happen. no, the other one is because of the state yeah, subdivision. Right. That was right. different. Okay, but this, this, this is a matter of you just getting out there and doing your thing, right? Oh, yeah. Give yeah. you the 90 days anyway. In case. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't envision any problems, but I didn't pass fall either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Bob seconded it, did he? Not yet. Oh, Not yet. I second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that was quick. Roscoe, I was just going to ask for your comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Ross. That's Roscoe, right? Yeah. 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 It's open to. Yep. Okay. So, Cam, how long do you think it will take for you to get something rolling on the uh, Vernal Pool issue? Um, well, I think as early as next week, we'll start working on it. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we can have something to you by the next meeting. Okay. Um, so, we, we want to move on that in September? Oh, sure. I, like I said, I don't want to be, yeah. you know, the fiasco we had last year. Yeah. I, I guess I would think about what you guys want to do with the conservation, conservation commission, how you want to involve them. If you would, if you would want to recommend having a representative of them work on this with us. Oh yeah, I think. Or, I think. Yeah. I think they are going to want to hold yeah. on to the hundred. Period. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah they are. And, but we're going to need to discuss it with them to hopefully convince them that uh, in certain instances, the circumstances, that 100 is excessive. Yeah, we just, we've got to be able to work with people. That's, that's, I don't like telling somebody, sorry, you can't do anything. Well, you know, we got to, there's got to be ways to, I mean, obviously some things you can't get around and that's the way it is, but some things I think that we should be able to work on and we, we need to have options and, and, or things to at least give people the option to choose whether or not they want to do it. Um, do you the, want me to put this on the agenda for the next meeting for discussion again? Or yeah. 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 You'll have, okay, I'll yeah. add that to the agenda. We should do that. You know, not, not that my language is perfect at all, and I think... No, but it's a good starting point. No, no, I think... And I, and I think no, I'll send... point, too, about to have a compensatory creating it, another wetland to yeah, I make mean, up for the one you, you might just... You know, people are going to be able to, to, to make things happen. And, you know, obviously, the more involved it is, the more it's going to cost. You know, because... Like like John DeFranza, when he built his road, he did have to do that. Mm -hmm. It was you know, um, he had to replicate one part of his old driveway, you know, yeah. to turn it back. And you know, it, it wasn't exorbitant. I mean, one of the prices he got for the design was, but the work wasn't. <laughs> so. Um, we need to be able to, we, we've got to be able to work with people in certain situations, you know, because, you know, we can't, they, some people, that's all they got. So, ob yes, obviously the Conservation Commission is going to be involved, um, you know. We may not be able to convince them otherwise, I mean, uh -huh. we'll just go ahead, I don't know. Well, no, we, we're going to give, the, give them they're going to be brought in and we're going to talk and we're going to discuss anyways. things, and, but we have to be able to have some latitude to, to help people. You know, obviously, you know, they, they're going to have to show what they have, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll go from there. And as I mentioned earlier, they, the, you know, the quarter of acre is what we had in the past. But right. Is that sacrosanct that we can't touch that? No, no. It's another item for negotiation as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then there's different qualities oh, yeah. of vernal pools. Right, and that's what... I think that's, that's what my what, language in there right. talks about. We need to, they need to be, you know, we're going to have to spend a little money, unfortunately, but to get it mapped out right and take care of it. 
Well, he may be talking more than just vernal pools, though, too. Right. I mean, it could be. It could be bigger. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and just just wet a wet spot, right? Right. You know, I think that we need to have some latitude ourselves right. if we got to go do a walkthrough, go look at mm -hmm. it, and prioritize it. Right. You know, to see, okay, what are we talking about here? Right. You know, obviously, if you're talking a room this size and it's got eight feet of water in it, that's not a vernal pool. You know, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, which your name, sir? Earl oh, Rhodes. I'm sorry, Earl. I couldn't tell you. I'm lo losing my eyesight. <laughs> Come on up front. Why are you hiding in the back? I love the it's, back. It's like church. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know there's nobody behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you came. Seriously, I am. Pleasure to be here. So you were talking about the, what, what you're talking about just now is the uh, amendments to the wetlands regulations that were voted in. Uh, two years ago. Right. right. Yeah. So the problem is, when I, we were discussing that, uh, I thought I had asked the question about the 100-foot setback on vernal pools, but I guess somewhere along the line, my fault, didn't pick up on this. this is, that's just way too restrictive, particularly if you own yeah. lots of land and you have five-foot diameter vernal pools in your property, you start drawing 100-foot setbacks all around those, that really chews up your land usage. And I'm not saying that we need to just say oh, the hell with it and backfill them. I'm just saying that people need to be able to work this out. You know, remediation is one of the ways to do it. And then, you know, some, some vernal pools are obviously maybe more valuable than others. Right. Um, Uh, technically, a, a wetland scientist should be able to come in and take a look and say, okay, this is, this is a seasonal wet area just by looking at the vegetation. Basically, that's what it's based that's on. That's what he vegetation. does, it, yeah. And uh, so they can identify that even though it may, may, be, may be dry as it was uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, three weeks ago, you know, you could lay down anywhere. Now you can't. <laughs> now you float away. So... Right. With the two cases. Right. So, so what we're looking at is, if, say, if someone of a homeowner came in and the building inspector looks in his backyard and there's a vernal pool within 100 feet of the back corner of the house and he wants to put a 25 by 25 addition on his house, right. he doesn't meet the 100 foot setback. Right. We need to be able to work with him on that because Fred, in Fred's writing right here, the minimum that we would want to go is 50 feet, okay? But like you said, if somebody has a one acre lot and the water's 25 feet behind their house, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go do a walk through and come up with some, a, a good plan to see what we can come up with. You know, if it's a major subdivision, depending on what they're doing, they might just plan on doing remediation right off the bat. Right. So, you know, I think it's, we need... So, so the one-acre problem is that lot may not be suited for building anyway. Well, no, no. I'm going on the assumption that there's already a house there. Okay. And this particular thing, because of the new setbacks, even though it's a prior lot, it's still, there's still issues, right? No. So if there was a lot before the 2006, yeah, it's, it's still okay. But even then, it was 75. 75, right. So yeah. even then, we'd still have to right. potentially deal with an issue. Well, it's 75 and a, and, a, and a quarter of an acre. Right. Yeah. So, but it, it, it just depends on where the house is and how close it is. So this ends up being a war on it for the next year. Yes, yes. that's right. Yes. Yeah. But right. we want to get going on it now so that we have plenty of time to discuss it.
that How are we doing, Cam? <laughs> um, I mean, the thing we need to do is uh, the problem, Ron, is 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 that the money? That's what people don't want to spend the money. Well, they voted against spending the money. Right, right, right. We yeah. need to do but that was some last sort year. of. Right. So Sylvia wanted to do this, whether it was a public meeting or, or some sort of outreach campaign, and it mm -hmm. was too late. It was too close to the, to voting. Um, and oh, she's done this before, I think, in Francis Town or New Boston, and it worked. Um, holding public meetings, like making videos of you know explaining why it's important, all that stuff, all the things that aren't happening. You know, here and, you know, if you're a voter, you know nothing about a master plan. You know, it would make sense why you'd be like, no, why do we, why am I going to yeah. Go ahead, Errol. Can I make a suggestion? On Old Home Day, the Heritage Commission is sponsoring a, a table for our county. Uh, and Ms. Roberts is involved in sort of outlining sort of the, the, the piece with Lego blocks on the table. But I think all the commissions have been invited to have a presentation um, at that table. I don't know, have you received that at all? No, <laughs> the planning board hasn't, no, it's not going to have. Yeah, it's not going to But um, there might be an opportunity to do exactly what Mr. Coleman just, just mentioned, which is, you know, these are the, this is the planning board, because the planning board's going to be on the map anyway, because Kelly's putting up a, a charter, a major oh, okay. commission, <clears throat> and, and how that will work. Because we're, we're on our default budget, and basically for the planning board as well, and uh, depending on what our expenditures are, that if we have money left over towards the end of the year, we can end up entering into a contract with Southern New Hampshire to start to right, do we, initial phase. Like we decided yeah. or talked about, not right. decided, but what we had talked about last year is oh, we got to pick off pieces at a time. Yeah, right. And that's that's the way it's going to happen more than likely in Deerfield. We're going to be able to go, okay, we can get this. Is there any CARES money that would be allocable for this kind of thing? Uh, <laughs> not, not for, no, not if. Uh, not for master plan kind of thing? No. No, for ventilation of the building and uh, health-related stuff, yeah, but not not a master plan. Okay. So it's um, it's been hard to work on a master plan. It's uh, what's the sanction? I know it's mandated by by RSA. What's the sanction? Well, somebody, some a developer could come in and, and challenge us that we're operating on an old master plan and uh, we're we're not uh, we're not it would operating be in contempt. Good, not operating in good faith and therefore try and try and overturn our regulations as a result. Well, no, you're 100 percent right, but unfortunately, I I don't want to say that, but more than likely that could be the only way to make that happen. No, or or. Oh no! Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, but a lot of times it's um, and I always fall back to the time that Fred had a meeting for a growth management ordinance. It's the only time this room was ever full. Okay, he had 60 people in here, and they cared about that. Really? I mean, I, I just—it's the truth. I mean, like I said, I'm glad you're here. Be Well, look, we didn't get one. Didn't pass, right? Well, yeah. we got one because the economy turned south. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah right. That's what happened. And, and it's just a matter of, um, I, you know, I hate to say it, it's, just a lot, it's not an exciting thing, I guess, for a lot of people. 
I mean, it needs to be done because. It, oh, excuse me. <laughs> well. When is Old Home Day? August. So is it the first set weekend or the second weekend? It's the second. So it'd be like the fourteenth. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, having. I guess the thing would be is if if we were going to have a table, it would need a sign on the back. This is the need for a master plan and why. What I mean by that is it the if you were like the planning board, the need for a planning board, the master plan, and why, an explanation for it. Um, the question is is how much. What sort of interest is going to be drawn um, on an old home day? That's my question. No, no, we're, we're, uh, so the, so the, uh, the Conservation Commission is going to put up uh, a number of, I, I think a couple of uh, displays on um, trails in town and some of the benefits of the, they sort of look after the town trails, map maybe something like that. I don't know if they're going to have any handouts, but I suspect they might. Uh, Heritage Commission is, is sort of kind of sponsoring the whole thing. We'll have a bunch of projects that we'll work on that people might be interested in participating in. It's, you know, partly, if, if, if we get people showing up on the home day, it's a chance for people to say, oh, this is what's going on. Yeah. And have, you know, maybe generate some interest. Three people is, you know, three people more in this room would be a 300% increase in the attendance. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. So, so and, and, and that would be my, you know, maybe five different views brought to the table and 10 different suggestions, who knows? But I mean, the point is, just getting some activity. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's yep. sort of the idea of, of that. And so if there's one or two projects that, that the planning board really wants to encourage for, you know, to, to put out there for people to know what is happening, or just one sheet that says these are the three things that are, you know, this is what we do and this is what's important, you know, that's, uh, that's an opportunity. Yeah. What, do, what do we have on our next meeting? Next meeting? Mr. Wood is coming in for a subdivision. Okay. The 20, 28th. So we have the first August meeting, which is going to be Ryan Tabor. Yeah, and, and Ed Cross. Ed Cross is coming back. But I think, well, the. the uh, we want to discuss the. home day will be after, after that. The no, next, before our next meeting. Well, no, this is the first meeting in July, so we have one more no, July. Yeah, we we right. have a 28th of July. I'm just thinking about do we want to. Leave a spot open just to talk about what if we want to put have some, some type of display. Yeah, we can we can put that at the end week. of the meeting for next yeah, week. Yeah, I've got so, so far I've got of course the uh, vernal pools we want to add to the agenda. Yeah, and I've got Mr. Uh, Rhodes is coming in for a subdivision yeah. application. And just just that. Those right now, I, yeah, okay. I, I okay. could have somebody else that just wants to come in yeah, and. Right. Okay. Without a public well, hearing, that should give us enough time. To yeah, well, I mean, because well, obviously we've got to start talking. So, what about do you want to just put on? Old Home Day uh, discussion? Or? Yeah, right. for the um, just master plan. Right. Master plan, okay. Well, master and plans whatever else we want to bring up. Okay. And do you guys have the uh, ability to, to print a, a banner type thing? And Yeah, I, I don't know about a big, like, a nice banner, but we can just we have a big plotter and we've done... 24 by 36? Yeah, we've done big displays like that oh, okay. at Old Home Days before. We've oh, done so. Okay, I'll put that on the agenda under yeah. new bit. So we could we just, can, just I can come up with ideas. Oh yeah, too. yeah, all right, yeah. Stuff, yeah, I mean, just like more, like Errol said, three people is a three hundred percent increase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and those people who go to old home days are typically voters too. No, no, yeah, yeah. I know that. It's just it depends on you know yeah. what frame of mind are they in? Are they do they want to talk politics or do they want to just you know talk? So they want ice cream. Right. Yeah. Well, so for, for I agree. For Cam for Cam uh, uh, food for thought, do, do we just want to primarily focus on master plan and the reasons I mean, for I mean we can do a couple you can do you know, a uh, this is the planning board, here are the planning board members, this is what we do. No, don't put my picture up there, okay. No, it doesn't have to be a picture. <laughs> It's going to be a dartboard. Like, this is what the planning board does, you know, educate people on what the planning board does, why master plan is important, the last time it was updated, 
Yeah, I mean that that's the type of stuff. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, yeah, maybe I don't know, do you mention the RSA? They're not gonna Boring. know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, like you're like, well, if we don't, we get sued. How about that? <laughs> yeah, no, that might that's that might turn them off a little bit. Yeah. Turn them off a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Oh god. But, um, That'd be good. Okay. Okay, I'll add that to the yeah. agenda for the 28th. Thank you. That was a good idea. Okay. Is that... well, I don't know which hat I'm wearing, but uh, I wear both of those hats, so. <laughs> well, no, it's you know, it's uh, it's been something we've been talking about. Oh, yeah. Since I've been here, right. and you've been talking about it longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Bill, Bill's not here, so does it fall? It's up to you. Ball? Any more questions, Errol? Okay. Let okay. go. Make a motion to adjourn. Uh, adjourn. Sounds Second. good. All those in favor? Aye. That sounds good. I'll keep you updated on the uh, discussions with Rick and Sylvia. Okay, good. Well, All right, take care. 829. I got a little behind on schedule tonight. Screwed up. Eight minutes and five. So just that everybody knows, I expect to be away on vacation the next on the next meeting. Oh, so yeah. that would be the July twenty eighth. Yeah. Okay. July twenty eighth, okay. Okay. And I'll be going to the second meeting in the in, in August. In August. Yes, you okay. Okay. All right, well I'm not gonna be here either one. No. <laughs> The one in the first one in in, uh, in August is going to be questionable, only because we're on a pretty good sized brook, so mm. putting a bridge in. Oh, uh, okay. So, can't just say ah, it'll be okay till morning. <laughs> you get one of those thunderstorms and mm -hmm. yeah, something <laughs> what happened yesterday. We're putting we're putting the pipe in, so we it was great up until we had all that rain. Oh yeah, and then it screwed me. The uh, the um, so what it is? It's on Gold Street in Manchester. They're putting in a new liquor store. This is Hannaford. This is where Enterprise State Liquor Store. Good idea. Yeah. Take care. Right. So what they're doing is um, they're um, not yeah, you too. So that's the old Enterprise rental sign. That's Gold Street out there. So there's no catch basin that starts. All, I mean, from here back up to the little snake curve on Gold Street, it's mm -hmm. got to be 400 feet. There's no catch basin that way. And from where I went into the road to the next one down, it's 300 feet. So it's like 700 feet with no wow. catch basin. And this driveway here yeah. is high on one side and curved, and it gradually goes down like mm -hmm. that. Well, I had reclaimed yeah, all the asphalt, so there's nothing there at all. So it all came in, oh, came down you. the trench, filled the trench oh, full wow. of water. And uh, this is this morning we got. This is July 